Do not live in fear. It is very frustrating for most of us, for most Christians, uh, especially when you are doing everything right, uh, when you are serving God, you go into church, you're reading your Bible, uh, you living pure, you're doing everything in your power to live right. And then uh, uh, when you look at uh, other people uh, who may not be walking with God, who may be doing everything wrong, and then somehow they seem to be prospering much more than you are prospering. When you look at their lives, you see it's as if everything is going right for them. But when you look at your life, nothing seems to be going right. Anybody ever face that? See, uh, but when you're doing everything right, it can lead you into despair. Or uh, when things are not going right in your life, you can be living in fear. And a lot of us, our life is saturated by fear uh, most of the time. But Psalm 37 encourages us as believers not to live in fear at any moment of our life. Because God is in control. See, the, the, the encouragement for us this morning is not to live in fear. Here's the message in one sentence. God, in one sentence, God is in control over every aspect of your life. You never have to live in fear. God is in control of every aspect of your life. You never have to live in fear. So this morning, I want to share seven things with you, seven Ds uh, about uh, what you should do when you face the uncertainties of life. When you face the uncertainties of life, instead of uh, folding into fear, but uh, you need to instead decide to keep the right perspective. You need to decide to keep the right perspective. You see, as you just read Psalm 73, you saw uh, the despair that was in the psalmist. As he was going and looking on, looking at other people, how things were going right for them, but not for him. But God is telling us in Psalm 37, hey, whatever we face in life, whatever when things are uncertain or when things are going right for people but not for us, God tells us, hey, we need to decide to keep the right perspective. We have to make a choice, okay? We can go ahead and, and live on, live on in fear or live in jealousy of the other per person's life or, or things that are not going right in our life, or we can make a conscious choice where we decide to keep the right perspective. Look at verse 1 and 2. It says, fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon what? Fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. You see, it's not your business when somebody, things are going right for them and it's not going right for you. It's not your business to, be, to envy them. It is not your business to worry. It is not your business to be jealous of them. Let them be and let God be. It says you need to decide to keep the right perspective. See, the word there, it says, fret not yourself. The word fret not means don't get burned up. That's what the literal translation means. Don't get burned up. See, when you see things might be going for somebody who might be doing evil, but you, you're doing everything right, what happens to you typically? Anger sets in. I can't believe this. 
I'm doing everything right, and the people who are not working with God seems to be having the, 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 the nice car, they're having the, the bigger house, uh, they, 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 they have children, and me, I've been struggling, I want kids, I cannot have kids. Uh, they, they, they are married, even though they've been living promiscuous lives, and, but me, I want to get married, but it's not working for me. God says, fret not yourself. It says, don't get burned up. Remove the anger from you. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. So pretty much the Bible is saying, don't let other people run your life. And a lot of us, the reason why we live in fear constantly is because we're letting other people run our lives. We're always comparing our life with somebody else. But God says, fret not yourself because of evildoers. Don't worry about people who are not doing the right thing. It is not your business. Your business is to do the right thing. You do your part and God will do his part. It says, be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. For some of us, we saying, oh, really? They've been doing well for quite some time. <laughs> but things are not working for me. But, but God's word is saying, they will soon fade like grass and wither like green herb. You remember how patient God is with you? One day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years just like one day. God's desire is that no one should perish but have eternal life. See, when you see life is still going well for them and they're not working with Christ, what is your job? Share the gospel so that they will turn away from their wicked ways. Because the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. What does God say? I will heal their land. God's desire is that the people you let run your life who do not seem to be walking with God, if you are in their life, you have an opportunity to turn their life around. That's what God really desires. Not necessarily to punish them. See, do not let other people's success or other people, what we call success, you may look at somebody's life and you feel like everything is going right for them and then you just don't know the whole story. See, on the outside, they might look really good, but you don't know what's going on the inside. You don't know what they're dealing with internally. See, don't be of envious of evildoers. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Don't get burned up. Don't get angry at people who do wrong. Instead, pray for them. Ask God to give you peace, not to be burned up, but instead that you keep it, you leave it to God. And ultimately, remember, we need to keep the right perspective because they will soon fade like grass and wither like green herbs. So those who do not repent, do not walk with God, ultimately, it is not our business to worry about them. God will take care of them. Remember in, in Psalm 73, uh, the psalmist was struggling with the same thing. The psalmist says, I was envious of the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. You know that you're not alone? When you feel jealous of other people, uh, when, when you live in fear like, or, or you feel like you, you're living in disappointment land, the psalmist had the same problem. David had the same problem. Oh, I don't think this is a psalm of David, but the, the psalmist, the one who wrote this psalm, had the same problem. It says, for I was envious. I believe this psalm was written by Asaph. Uh, for I was envious of the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. You see, if you feel that way, uh, you, are, uh, you are not the only one. 
Okay, the psalmist struggled with the same thing. But you don't want to stay there. You don't want to stay there. Then look at the progression of the psalm in verse 13. It says, all in vain have I kept my heart clean and washed my hands in innocence. So what's the point of serving God? What's the point of living in purity? What's the point of doing everything right? That's what the psalmist is saying. You see, whenever you feel discouraged, whenever you feel like you're living in fear, go to the Bible, go to the Psalms. You will see a lot of time that the psalmist was depressed, going through all kinds of problems in life. When you feel discouraged, you feel like you're living in fear, go to the Scriptures. Psalm 37 and Psalm 73 are two great places to start. All in vain have I kept my heart clean and washed my hands in innocence. So the psalmist here is saying, why am I walking with God? Why am I trying to do everything right when others, they are not doing right and everything seems to be working for them? But until he kept the right perspective, you see, you see that's why you need to tell God everything in prayer. We need not to be ashamed and just go to God and just be very transparent. God already knows what's in your heart. If you feel it, pray it. Okay? If it came to your mind, pray it out to God because God already knows it. There's nothing to hide. You see, but don't stay down. Look at the psalmist now. The prayer turns. Until I went to the sanctuary of God, until I came to church, until I opened my Bible, until I got to God's Word, until I saw things in God's perspective, not my perspective, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I discovered their end. Truly, you set them in slippery places, you make them fall to ruin. See, you never have to worry about people who are doing wrong. You try to reach out to them if you are in their lives to restore them. But if they don't repent, God will take care of them. It is not your business. Your business is to walk with the Lord and always keeping the right perspective in mind. Look at verse 19. How? They are destroyed in a moment, stripped away utterly by terrors. See, God is in control. We are not. The next thing it says, not only we need to decide to keep the right perspective, but we also need to decide to trust the Lord. We need to decide to trust God. Whatever you face in life, you have to give it to God. If it's too much for you, then you should not keep it to yourself. You need to give it to God. You see what the verse says there in verse 3? Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. See, whenever you feel fearful, you feel discouraged, you, you start becoming envious of others, God says, hey, trust in me. Look at Psalm 73, verse 25 to 28. It says, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. So in your affliction, in your trials, when you feel like you have to worry, when you feel like you're being fearful, choose God. Choose God. There's nothing on earth that I desire besides you. See, there's nothing that we should desire more than God. It says, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forevermore. See, whenever you face difficult times, you're feeling fearful, you're feeling discouraged, you're feeling tired, you feel like, like life is not fair, you're feeling like others are doing better than you while you're walking with God and they are not. Decide to choose God, to trust in God. 
God is the strength of my heart, my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you shall perish. You put an end to everyone who is unfaithful to you. And then look at verse 28. But for me, it is good to be near God. Really, the psalmist is saying, mind your business. But for me, it is good to be near God. Be thankful for the relationship that you have with God. I have made the Lord my refuge that I may tell of all your works. You see, focus on God. Focus on you. Don't worry about other people. Make God your refuge. When you feel fearful, you run to God. There's a Bible verse in the psalm that says, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. So when you feel afraid, you're living in fear, you're feeling discouraged, trust in God. Put your trust in God. Let God be your refuge. And you see what the psalmist is saying to do? That I may tell of all your works. That's witnessing, okay? We go back to discipleship, okay? Tell others what God has done. Be busy about what God is doing. Tell, uh, tell of all God's works. Say, don't get busy worrying about other people's prosperity. That is not your business. And in, 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 uh, in the end of Psalm 37, in verse 25 to 26, it says, I have been young and now am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. He is ever lending generously and his children become a blessing. See, one of our big worries and, and things that cause us fear is financial. Often, if we don't see money in the bank account, we get very fearful. How am I going to pay my mortgage, my rent at the end of the month? How am I going to pay my utilities? Uh, how am I going to eat? That's why you trust God, because it says, I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. See, as a believer, God promised food, shelter, and clothing for you at any point in your life. As a believer, you will always have food, shelter, and clothing. That's a promise from God. Does that mean that you're not going to have some difficulties where you would learn to trust in God? Uh, does that mean that it's going to be always filet mignon or steak? No, but God will always provide one way or another for you. What does it mean somebody brings some food to your house? Okay, God promises food, shelter, and clothing as long as you are walking with him. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. See, that's a promise from God. You're walking with him, you will get the basic necessities of life. Matthew 6 tells us the same thing. You see, as a, as a believer, see, the, the, uh, the righteous person, the believer, is generous, okay? He's ever lending generously, and his children become a blessing. You see, don't focus on other people's success. Focus with what God has given you, and what God has given you, be generous with what that you, that you have, instead of saying that, oh, I should get what they have. That is not our business. We decide to keep the right perspective all the time, and we decide to trust God in whatever we face. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 tells us, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having what? All sufficiency in all things at all all times you may abound in every good work that's our family verse for this year that's one thing i always encourage you 
Every year, pick a Bible verse, make that your theme verse for the year. That's our Bible verse for the year as a family. And God has been faithful. I've always seen God's hand work. God is able to make all grace abound to you. So that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. That's what happened when you trust in the Lord. When you decide to choose God no matter what you face. In Philippians 4.19, we all know this one by heart. Say it with me. It says, and my God shall supply what? All my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God promised to supply every need that you have. So you don't have to worry whether it's financial, whether it's relational, uh, whether it is uh, you name it. Whatever you need, God promises the believer that I will supply all your needs. And we see, look at that. This is according to his riches. So whatever you might be going through, whatever problem, whatever trials that it might be, for the believer, know that it's temporary. Remember the book of James? We have to face trials to really test our faith. Yes, you will face difficulties, but ultimately, God will supply all your needs. Does that mean that you will never face hard time again? Please say no. You will face hard time in this life. But when your trust is in God, when things are not going right, you keep the right perspective. In the end, God will supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. So not only we need to decide to keep the right perspective when we face the uncertainties of life, when we feel like we want to live in fear, we need to uh, keep the right perspective, we need to decide to trust in God, but also the psalmist says, hey, we need to do good. How many of you like when you face trials, when you uh, feel like there's things are uncertain in your life and you are discouraged? How many of you are just looking forward to do good? Come on, not one spiritual person here. Uh, <laughs> you see, naturally, that's not the thing that comes for us. When things are not going right, we want to grumble. Uh, we, we want to, 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 to just keep talking about our miseries. Uh, we, we just want to be mad. We want to be angry. We want to be jealous. We want to be burning up in anger. <laughs> but God says, hey, hey, hey. When things are not going your way and it's going well for somebody else, when you feel like you, you just want to put yourself in a corner and living in fear, God says, hey, I want you to do good. Not only I want you to keep the right perspective, I don't want you to trust in me in this season of life, but God also says, do good. Because that's what verse 3 says. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Did it say something else? It says, do good. God says, when you feel fearful, uh, when you feel thing, you are discouraged, when things are not going right for you, God says you need to say it with me. Do good. Isn't that what Galatians 6 verse 9 tells us? Let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Do you trust God's word? See, that's why when you face difficulties in life, you have to run to God so that you can keep the right perspective. Because otherwise, if you don't run to God, you decide to trust in God in that problem that you face, you, destroy the, you, you, you don't decide to keep the right perspective, you're going to go into despair. You're going to go into jealousy. Okay, You will... Focus on things you do not have while you already have things that God has already given to you. And God says, with what you have, you do good. With what you have, you do good. And God promised, I love it again. Every time God gives us a commandment and he even gives us a promise. It says, let us not grow weary in doing good. God says, when you do good, 
you will be blessed. You will get a reward for in due season you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. Amen? Uh, uh, next uh, verse that really uh, speaks out about doing good, but uh, um, uh, in Philippians uh, 4.19, as you already saw that one, but also uh, I love this quote by uh, Chuck Smith. It says, time is on your side when you do right. Just wait. Isn't that good? Time is on your side when you do right. Just wait. Because a lot of time when we are doing good and we don't see any fruits coming out, discouragement steps in. But Chuck Smith says, hey, just wait. I love uh, 1 Timothy 6, 17 to 19. It speaks about uh, financial uh, blessing. It says, as to, for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertain riches. You see, we're fighting for riches, looking at other people's life. We want what they have. We feel jealous that they're doing better than us. But God says, don't set our hopes on uncertain riches, uncertainties of riches. Riches as a way of flying away. You may be doing good today, and then all of a sudden, stock market crash, everything that you had on your 401k, everything that you had in your retirement, it just goes way down. Riches have a way of just walking away. They are uncertain. And I know that, you know, just all of you will have retirement plans, you know, in COVID, all those things. It goes way down. And I remember my parents calling me, should we take our money out? <laughs> You know, my dad, hey, hey, look, look, look at your mom's plan. Riches are uncertain. Okay, account might look really good and fat. And then it just slim and slim and slim and slim and slim down. But you see the problem when our uh, focus is on riches? Uh, it's me, 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 me. Like, 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 like it will always be there. We don't know that. Riches have a way of just flying away. It says, do not set our hope on uncertainty of riches, but on God who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. You see, God is saying, there's nothing wrong with riches. When you have it, enjoy it. But don't let that grab a hold of your heart to make you envious of others. See, and a lot of time, all of us are really rich. We have enough. We can eat, right? We can dress. We have a place to stay. And most of us have a car. We are rich. What happens to us when we feel like we don't have enough is when we look at somebody else. And then when we start comparing our life with somebody else, all of a sudden now we feel like we are poor. But in reality, we have everything that we actually need. See, the Bible says, hey, hey, don't let your focus be on your riches and only keeping it for yourself, but do good with your riches. Look at what it says in verse 18. They are to do. Can you say it with me? They are to. Oh, only one of you. They are to. Oh, try again. They are to do. There you go. Now you're here. Your riches is for you to do good. It's not just for you. Your riches is to do good. It says they are to do good. To be rich in good works. To be generous and ready to share. 
the storing up treasures for themselves as a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of what is truly life. See, this life that we live is not the real life. The real life is in heaven. The real life is with Christ. Your riches are not for you. They are for you to do good. Like when you look uh, in Hawaii right now, in Maui, as they go in with all those problems, you find a good organization that is helping in the area. You send some money. Use some discernment. Some people just abuse and use stuff, but that's what your riches are for. That's why you give to church. When you give, that the church can use that money to do good. When somebody in the church or somebody in the community that has a need so we could meet that need. But not thinking that everything that I have is mine. And then not only that it's mine, I'm coveting other people's stuff. But once you have your riches, the right perspective is that you use what you have, what God has given you to do what? Oh, y'all don't like it. You use your riches to do? Why do you have your riches? You use your riches to do what? You do good. Let's keep moving because you don't like that part. No matter how bad things are for you, someone else has it worse. Ever realize that? No matter how bad things are for you, someone else has it worse. So there's always opportunity to do. There's always opportunity to be generous. See, it doesn't matter how bad you have. Just know that somebody else has it worse. So when you tend to live in fear, live in discouragement, decide to keep the right perspective. Decide to trust the Lord, uh, do good, and then you need to dwell in his faithfulness. Trust that God is faithful. How many of you know that God is faithful? God is faithful, even when we are faithless. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Then what does it say? Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. God is saying, hey, let God's word be your friend. Uh, just let God, when you look at the stories of the Bible, pages after pages, when God has been faithful, God is saying, hey, let that be your friend. Remember uh, Joseph went through a big ordeal with his brother selling him into slavery. And it feels like nothing was working for him. Well, he was doing right. He was doing good. He, did, he wanted to live in purity while well, his boss's wife wanted to have an affair with him. He ran away, keeping his purity intact. But instead, he was falsely accused and moved from the pit to a rich house and now to go back to prison. And while in prison, doing good, interpreting dreams for people, he was doing everything right. He was forgotten. But instead of living in despair, living without hope, Joseph kept going until his day come where Joseph graduated from the pit, from the prison to the palace. That's why it says, dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. God is faithful. You can always count on God, just like God did it for Joseph. He can also do it for you. And the Bible is pregnant. The Bible is replete with stories of his faithfulness. And we just need to trust him. Really what he's saying there to, to dwell in his faithfulness or befriend faithfulness is that God is asking us to saturate our mind with his word. When we fall into despair, it's because we have forgotten God's word or we stop trusting in God's word. Have you ever realized that? Whenever you're falling into despair, you're falling into fear, 
it's because you have forgotten what God's word has said. Or you read it and then you stop trusting in it. You stop believing what it says. That's why you need to memorize scripture. You need to memorize scripture. Because once you memorize scripture, it has a way of coming back in times of need. So that you can bring that scripture back to you. As remember, David says, why are you cast down, O my soul? He says, but I will trust in God. See, when you're feeling down, you need to speak scriptures to yourself. Saturate your mind with God's word. Dwell in his faithfulness. Look back. That's why people will journal. And going back to those journals, when you're feeling discouraged, so you can see how God has worked in your life before. And a lot of us, if we had remembered what God has already done in our life before, we would not fall into fear or despair when we face a new problem. Because most of the time, God already solved that exact same problem uh, before in our life. So that's why we need to dwell in his faithfulness. So not only we need to decide to keep the right perspective, decide to trust the Lord, do good, dwell in his faithfulness, we need to delight ourselves in the Lord. I think that's the key verse. That's one of the key verses in Psalm 37. And I know most of you know this one by heart, or as a kid you memorize it. We need to delight ourselves in the Lord. In verse 4 it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart now does it let's be careful with this verse because the prosperity gospel has really messed up that verse prosperity gospel will tell you Whatever you need, you will get. You need a Lamborghini? Just say, God, I need a Lamborghini, and God will give it to you. Okay? I need a, an 18-bedroom house. Um, I just claim it. I just claim it, and then it's going to happen. That's not what the verse is saying now, okay? And if you're single, why do you need an 18-bedroom house for? See, your heart is not in the right place. Even if you were married, you had two kids, why do you need an 18-bedroom house for? For guests? <laughs> Some people are more generous than others, and they always want to have guests in their houses. So, <laughs> Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And again, if you have the money, you want to have an 18-bedroom house and have guests, you always have room for guests, have fun. Remember, whenever you have what you have, you do good with it. You don't just keep it for yourself. Do good. I don't have any problem with people who have 18-bedroom houses, okay? It's up to them and God what they do with it. But this verse here, when it says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. What the Bible is saying there, once you're walking with God, God's desires become your desires. And in the end, your desires become God's desires because your mind is so saturated with God's word because you know God's plan. Now, all your desire is to do what God's want. And in the end, it's just like it's a perfect marriage. God's heart and your heart are just knitted together. So now your desires become God's desires. So as a result, because you're delighting in the Lord, God gives you the desires of your heart because your desires become his. I love the way that Jer David Jeremiah puts it. It says, cover the relationship with God that becomes central to who you are. Covet a relationship with God that becomes central to who you are. You see, at the very fabric of your life 
it needs to be God. Matthew 6, 33, you know, I always say that to you. That should be the theme verse for every Christian. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. All the other things that you're seeking, when your relationship is right with God and his righteousness, that means you're walking with him, God will give you whatever you need. That's what the Bible says. Then we need to devote our life to the Lord. We need to devote our entire life to the Lord. So we need to decide to keep the right perspective whenever we face uncertainties or difficult times in life. We're feeling fearful. Uh, we need to uh, uh, decide to trust God, to do good, to dwell in faithfulness, to delight ourselves in the Lord, and then we need to devote our entire life to the Lord. Look at verse 5. Verse 5 says, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and what will he do? He will act. You know, I remember growing up as a kid, sometimes in the church, they'll tell you to come forward and then to dedicate your life to the Lord. Not only to give just for salvation, but, but to make a commitment to live your life entirely for God. And I think there, there's value in that, where we really give our life and says, Hey, God, take my life and let it be yours. Not my will, but your will be done. So we need to devote our life to the Lord because it says commit your way to the Lord so when you devote you dedicate your life to the Lord God says hey you trust in me I will act for you see uh, uh, in Psalm 37 again but in verse 23 and 24 it says the steps of a the steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. So God says, hey, when you walk in with me, you delight yourself in me, your steps are ordered by God. And I've seen this countless of times in my life, in other people's life, where when you delight yourself in God, you, you saturate your mind, you walk with God, your steps are ordered by him. See, there, was, there, there might be one thing that you want so bad in your life, and then you're trying to achieve it in one way. And then when you just live it to God, and then God takes you a different path, when you think that God don't just take you in a different path entirely, and then while you're in that other path, those other things that you wanted, and all of a sudden God provides for those things in your life. I've seen it countless of times. And that's what God is telling us. God says the steps of a man are established by God when he delights in his way. Don't fight with God. If you get into a point that something you want badly in your life and it's not working, stop doing it your way and just give it to God. Just God, just say, say God, my life is yours. I put my life into your hand. Do unto me as you please. I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. When you devote your life to God, whatever else you think you were looking for, like in a different place, God has a way of taking you into his path and then giving you what you were looking in the first place. I remember my church in, uh, in Florida, uh, there was uh, there was a guy who was just uh, desperate, and then he wanted to get married, but but could never find the right girl to get married. And then my pastor was preaching one day. He said, "Hey, if you want to get married, what you need to do is start serving. <laughs> See, children's ministry needs workers." That guy went and served in children's ministry. Guess what? He found his wife there. Okay, as they were serving. You see, that's why God says, do good. 
Okay? When in your trials, when you feel fearful, when you feel like things are not going your way, you want to be discouraged, serve. Go and do good. Well, you feel like I need to do it this way, but God says, hey, hey, go my way, do good, do what you're supposed to, and then I will open doors that you were looking for already. That's the way that God works. The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong, for the Lord upholds his head. So remember now, does that mean everything is going to be perfect because we work with the Lord? There are some falling. There are sometimes things will not work your way. That's the problem with the prosperity gospel. Tell you it's going to be always perfect. God says here, hey, you will have some problems in life. Job says men were born for trouble. Jesus said in this life you will have trouble. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world and then in psalm 145 verse 19 one of my favorite now it says he fulfills the desire of those who fear him he also hears their cry and saves them let's say it together he fulfills the desire of those who fear him he also hears their cry and saves them. Hey, God, hear your cry. Whatever you may be going, whatever you may be fearful about, whatever may get you discouraged, God says he fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. So whatever you might be dealing with right now that is causing fear, God says cry out to me. Why don't you go ahead and take a minute now and go ahead and cry out to God, whatever you might be fearful about right now, about whatever might be causing discouragement in your life. Father, we commit all of our trouble before you, all the things that causes anxious thoughts in us, all our worries, all our discouragement, we commit them to you this morning. And we pray, Father, I pray for every prayer that was prayed this morning. May you answer those prayers, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, not only... Uh, we need to decide to uh, 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 keep the right perspective, decide to trust in the Lord, decide to do good, uh, uh, dwell in his faithfulness, uh, delighting ourselves in God, devoting our entire life with Christ. But lastly, the psalmist says, when you face uncertainties in life, when you see others are prospering, uh, more than, uh, and than you, even when they're not working with God. The psalmist says, hey, decide. Make a decision to wait patiently on God. Decide to wait patiently on God. Discipline yourself to wait patiently on God. That's what it says in verse 7. It says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. It says, be still before the Lord. See, a lot of us 
patient is not our virtue. We want things to happen in our timetable, right? But now we need to commit to discipline ourselves to decide to wait on God's timetable. Because God says, be still before me and wait patiently for me. Fret not. Don't be burned up. over the one who prospers in his way, over one who carries out evil devices. God is saying, that is not your business. Your business is to discipline, to decide, to wait on him as you face those challenges. So really the message in a nutshell is simply this. Don't worry about what's going on in other people's lives or the uncertainties of life. God will take care of you. Learn to build your trust in God. Amen? Once we do that, once we decide to keep the right perspective, once we decide to trust in God, once we decide to do good, even when we don't want to do good, when we delight ourselves in the Lord, once we decide to dwell on his faithfulness, when we devote ourselves entirely to God, and then when we discipline or decide to wait on him patiently, God says he will act. And these promises are for believers. And if as anyone would never put their trust in God, you know, all those blessings can also be theirs. And that's why we need to be bearers of the good news. So we share God's word with people so that they become believers, so that they can enjoy those blessings from God's word, so that they can make those commitments to follow God. And God promised to take care of them just like God will take care of us. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for the opportunity to study your word this morning and to look at Psalm 37. See how you are promising, Lord God, to take care of us and encouraging us not to be burned up, not to worry about others in their prosperity, but rather put our hope and trust in you. Thank you, Father, for all your amazing grace. I pray for each one of us here this morning. May we receive your grace, and may we live according to your ways, not ours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hello guys, this is David from Bible Fellowship. Thank you for checking out this week's message on YouTube. If you live in Cleveland area, please come and join us. We would love to meet you. Also, please check our website, www.biblefellowshipcleveland.org. There, you can send us a message, share a prayer request, and subscribe to our weekly update. Please Subscribe and share today's message to your friends and family on social media and join us next week for more content. Thanks again for watching.